Welcome back to the Neo Marketing Podcast. Today we're going to play Mythbusters. Welcome to the Golden Group Neo Marketing Podcast, a bi weekly discussion of best practices, latest trends, and modern techniques for professional business communication, including advertising, marketing, digital channels, social media, public relations, and alternative options. Well, good morning, Kyle. How are you? Fantastic. How are you today, Prince? I'm doing pretty well. I'm doing pretty well. Um, this this topic is 10 myths of cri- about crises. Okay. Okay. Nothing, I mean, it's not tied to any current <laughs> events, although... There's always a crisis it's, somewhere it's, with somebody. So exactly. in, in theory, if anyone can use this advice at any time because it happens. Well, <laughs> and I think it's important because... People have these preconceptions of what a crisis can do or right. will do or sure. is all about. So here we go. We're going to do a top 10. Courtesy of Seeger, Selmer, Selnow, and Ulmer. And we'll put that. Easy for you to say. Yeah, exactly. Say that <laughs> fast. Four times. We will put the link we'll in, put the, the link in, in the, the uh, description. description. Absolutely. So number one is the number one myth that we're going to bust is crises build character okay i've heard that yeah you have it's it's not true crisis doesn't build character here here it comes listen up crisis exposes character or reveals character reveals same way of saying the same thing right? yeah i just you know more negative yeah (laughs) anyway i need my coffee uh (laughs) so that's number one okay crisis and i agree with that doesn't build character it reveals yes. character. Yes, it okay. does. So number two, and this one's really important, crises do not have any positive value. Well, they absolutely can. They absolutely can. Absolutely. And finding positive value in it is something you should do. Now, you can't al- it, maybe you can't always get there, well, but, but there, there, sometimes you can. I'm going to advocate that you can. Okay. You can always get to opportunity. Well, you definitely can learn – from any situation, Absolutely. positive or negative. Absolutely. And I, I will argue you learn more from negative situations. I tell people all the time I learn how to be a good boss by listening to really bad bosses. Right. So I think negative situations actually teach you more and are more def- definitive in, the, in what you learn from them. Yeah, I, I, even in fi- – exactly. And it's, it's, that's funny that you would bring that up because in class here this week, we talked about learning through failure. Yeah. That failure is not fatal – Failure to change is. and, and The, the only time fa- fa- failure is fatal is if you quit. Right, exactly. If you, you learn from it attention. and move forward, then it's just, it's just a hiccup, a bump in the road. Absolutely. And scholars debate this, but the Chinese symbol for um, crisis uh, has opportunity in it. There you so, go. So, you know, Chinese and... Ancient Chinese ancient wisdom. Ancient Chinese were pretty smart. Um, the third myth is that crisis is about determining blame. No. Yeah. No. Responsibility and blame. Everybody, you know, it's like Henry Mitchell said in the movie Dennis the Menace, Martha, with a crisis this large, somebody's got to be to blame, right? Which, it's not about blame. It's not the point at all. That's not the point at all. It's about, and, and this is a life lesson thing too, okay? Focusing on the solution yes. instead of the problem. Absolutely. Right, because... Doing the who shot John is not going to give you any information. I thought you were going to say who shot JR. <laughs> or JR, right. But going through the problem is yeah. not going to solve anything. Focusing on the solution is where you need to Absolutely. go. Absolutely. Okay. Um, is this the fourth one? I think it's the fourth one. <clears throat> Crisis communication is solely about getting information out to stakeholders. Well, no, that's very limited view of what crisis very communication limited is. View. And it's yes, only a singular aspect out of multiple aspects it is, involved. It is a very small right. aspect of, and certainly information, but there are so many other things too. I mean, empathizing with the victims, right. helping them to to get better, maintaining the company's reputation, assurance of that the task at hand is is understood and is under control, and then is not repeatable. Right. Right. Or at least it's an attempt to not repeat it. And, and that's the learning organization is yes. the one that, that is, is going to fare best post-crisis. Absolutely. 
um, my, one of my favorites, crisis communication involves taking a rigid and defensive stance. Rigid and defensive is always a bad idea yeah. when it comes to communication or management of, of a process of business, et cetera. So um, automatically, I'm going to disqualify that one. There we go. Yeah. I call that the deep defensive crouch. And and you're playing you're you're not playing anything you're playing you're playing victim basically. And even if uh, the crisis is has nothing to do with you or it wasn't your making or, or literally it feels like the the most unfair scenario for it to be thrust upon you, uh, there still is a, a process of how to do better as opposed to the defensive pushback of it wasn't me you can't prove anything. Right, absolutely. I mean that's that's no good for the organization. Yeah. That's no good for your stakeholders. Probably less likely people believe you if you take a hundred percent. Absolutely. You you can't pin this on us. Right. Tact versus uh, we didn't do this, but we but again, how do we how do we right. all move forward together? How do we do better? How do we 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 help what happened the negative the item not happen in general, exactly. much less with us or not. All of those attitudes are more likely to get people involved and invested in your process and helpful and hopeful uh, for what you're doing as opposed to what not uh, screw you. Right, exactly. Because I mean that's that is the very negative capitalistic approach to things. It's all about the money. It's not all about the no. money. It's about people. It's about reputation. It's about doing better for society. So, yeah, the deep defensive crouch isn't going to work for you very well. Um, I, I think you'll resonate with this one. Crisis communication is about enacting elaborate prefabricated crisis plans. Oh, gosh. Have we talked if about If you've plans? ever heard an episode of this <laughs> podcast. Uh, so there's so much to break down there, right? right so right, right. Um, simple, simple is always the best. Yep. So and apps, that's absolutely in communication. Simple is always the best. But in business, and, simple is always best as well. So, crisis, so elaborate. Uh, I important. want to throw elaborate out right. <laughs> right. Preconceived is just is just boxing yourself into something you think might happen, uh, unless you're planning on it happening. And then there's some other ethical considerations right. that you would want to put in right. front of yourself there. So, yeah. um, yes, preconceived plans are their starting places. Uh, they're basic basic ideas, but they're not what you do. Nope. It's 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 a it's a launching pad to the reaction to the actual particulars of what is going on in that exact moment. Not these big ideas. That's a marketing standpoint. Yeah. Plan is an important That's what I do. part of marketing. Yeah, but you've heard me talk about the plan is dead. That's it's all right. about protocols. Protocols are much more effective, efficient and get to the root of what needs to be done faster, faster than plans do. And covers more eventualities because you cannot plan no. for every type of crisis. So no. prefabricated plans, obsolete as soon as, you're, as soon as they're built, a waste of time. That's right. Just sitting on a shelf collecting dust as opposed to protocols that empower your employees to make decisions based on you based on who you are as a business as an organization and a a predeveloped attitude and process absolutely that sounds so much better than go read it out of a book right. and then regurgitate <laughs> something that doesn't actually apply right. right no one wants to do that so it's not it's not about it's not about how to respond it's about uh, who's involved in the response right. why you're going to respond so yeah um Prefabricated crisis plans. Bah, the worst idea ever. Worst idea ever. That should have been number one for the worst idea. <laughs> well, Not maybe, this, maybe so. Or, or no, number one or number 10. It should. <laughs> uh, all right. So crisis communication is about over reassuring the public about the impact of the crisis to avoid panic. Uh, for those of you just listening to the podcast and not watching the video, I'm just shaking my head. No. <laughs> yes. Like, no, no. The minute you started that sentence, I was like, no, no, o no. Over-reassurance is a death knell for an organization <sighs> because most of the time, at least in my experience and from the research, the, the literature, people who over-reassure end up having to walk it back. Right. They also kind of come off suspect. Is what, what What are you hiding right. by the the – thrust of over of over assurance and uh, we've said many times before in this podcast too that modern audiences uh because of the way we 
take in media now. We take in communication. We're part of the communication process. We make media as well as, as much as we consume it. So audiences are bright and they're smart and they sniff out inauthenticity and they do not respect it. And in fact, they go the opposite direction if they feel that you're uh, filling them full of of extra. Right. Over reassurance. Yes. I'm going to give you an over reassurance. You tell me which crisis it was. (laughs) Okay. Okay. I hope I get this right. Uh, This is not a big deal. We've done um, oil cleanup before. Oh, this has got to be BP. Nope. Exxon Valdez. Oh, okay. I remember that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, In Alaska, right? That was the first one of the things, right? We've done this before. Well, they had to walk that one back big time. <laughs> they, may not, they may have had to clean up oil before, right. but nothing on the scale of Exxon And it's Valdez. not really hard in a situation like this to express that you have expertise and that you're addressing the situation. They obviously sent uh, the, the, what was necessary to go and, and begin the process, which wasn't going to be overnight. It was going to be a long process. Right. It was a lot of oil and a lot of places and a lot of, of things affected. But the idea of it's easy... Like, right. How are you going to say it's easy when it's not going to be done in a day, a week, or even a month? That, that's a silly statement. To make. Absolutely, and e- even even with the expertise they had, expertise it's still they a had, silly statement. It, the, the expertise they had did not have experience with a spill At that, that scale. large. That's right. Absolutely. So, and um, even if they did, it's still not easy. <laughs> right. It's it's never easy. No one believes they're easy. And so the, the, the audience stops listening to everything that came after it's easy. Because no matter what else they said about what steps they would take, the technology they would use, uh, past examples, whatever they they said next, the, oh, you think it's easy? I'm not listening to you anymore. Right. You get a little Baghdad Bob kind of right. scenario there, <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. And it, it wrecks your reputation. Yep. It wrecks your credibility. So. Don't over reassure. And oh, by the way, certainly in my experience, and again from the literature, um, pe- people are uh, not rattled by bad news. Sure, they're, it happens. They're rattled by how the crisis, how the crisis communicator. Yes. I mean, the lack. That that goes straight. I can't get my words. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's much like with with children, right? It's it's not the thing that you did. I'm mad about. It's the fact that you lied to me about it, right? Or you weren't honest right. about it. Exactly, is worse than than the the transgression, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And most of the time, people will not panic when they receive bad news. Right. It's it's only when they don't feel like the authorities are being straight with them. For sure, that will create panic. Okay, so communi- uh, crisis communication is about communicating only when new information is available. I'm shaking my head again, folks, for people listening on the podcast. Uh, that's a, such a simplistic way of looking at it and not a realistic way at looking at crisis communication. Well, uh, the example I use here is 9-11. Sure. Rudy Giuliani was on the podium all the time. Right. Even if he didn't have anything to tell you, he told you that we don't have any updates, but this is what we're doing. Right. right. I got my first hate mail as an educator when I gave President George Bush W uh, a B for his crisis communications okay. because it took him four hours to address the nation. Right. Giuliani had been on the podium like 16, 17, 18 times since then. So. It's not about just communicating when new information is Something available. Something we see here a lot in Oklahoma because we have storms. We have we have uh, tornadoes in the spring and, and some winters we have bad, bad ice storms. And so um, it's an ongoing process, right? There's the, the storm hits and then there's the, the, the assessment of damage. There's the, the recovery process begins and then it, go, and it goes anywhere from picking up tree limbs and, you know, clearing the streets through whole neighborhoods have been devastated. We need the right. National Guard to come in and, and the Red Cross and everything else. Right. And so our state leaders are are the city where it is located the governor the united way is typically when i when i worked at united way we were usually the um convener the the organization that sort of convened all of our but we were always making updates on what was happening in storm recovery and it wasn't just simply the governor or the mayor or the uh the, the fire chief it was all the aspects of the emergency response itself so the right. mayor 
had discussed what was going on at his level. The, the governor discussed what was happening at the state and the federal level, the federal that was coming in from FEMA, et cetera. Uh, the fire chief ex- explained what they were doing. The police chief talked about what they were doing. The uh, Red Cross talked about what they were doing. The people who were running shelters talked about where you could find all. So it, it, and it was on a regular basis, right. even though sometimes between uh, briefing A and briefing B, there weren't major changes. Right. But progress was always being made, but it was the reassurance and the, if you didn't see the last re- uh, com- press conference, here's the information that we think you need, and we're just continue to give the information you need, and then as updates happen, provide that as well. So it's a very fluid process when it's done well. And and if you take the stance that you're only going to provide information when it's new, two things are going to happen. One is your failure to communicate is going to mean you're not doing anything That's right. to the audience. A lot of people right? making assumptions about what's happening instead of you letting them know. Second is you vacated the play the playing field, and so somebody else is going to be more than happy to enter that space for you, Boy, and, and you're not going to like the story. And right now, that is... Twitter, <laughs> and, right. you know, social media experts, yes. you know, uh, uh, random people on social media saying, I heard this, I saw this, I drove by there, I did, you know, blah, blah, yep. my cousin works there, right. whatever the thing is, the rumor mill really gets ramped really up, ramps up. Uh, and it's, it's transmitted via, via social media at the speed of light. So, yes, when you vacate the position of authority, you absolutely open a door for chaos absolutely and and you cede to somebody else the ability to tell your story okay so crisis communication is primarily about managing the image or reputation of an organization no no not even close no not even close. that's the last thing you do well and actually if you put this let me rephrase that okay it's not something you actively do right it's something that happens because you've done all of the work properly bam Bam, we've been hanging out a lot. <laughs> I learned from the best, people. The professor knows what he's talking about. I know what I'm talking about because I talked to this guy. <laughs> yeah, your reputation or your image is the result of what you do. That's right. It's not the goal. You could tell people all day long, you're in control, this is easy, we know what we're doing. People won't believe it until they see it in action. Yeah, absolutely. Actions speak louder than words. Absolutely. And, and there are other things like the – Virtue of care, taking care of people, making mm-hmm. them whole again, giving them instructing information so that they can protect themselves, self-advocacy. This goes back to the, one of the other earlier points about finding positives in a, in a, in a crisis scenario right. is your action and reaction, what you do, the priorities you put in place on the fly, under stress, because it's a crisis situation, will reveal the character. Well, that's another point right. we made earlier, a revealing character. And if you do it well, this is how you find the positive in it, the, uh, the public will give you a great uh, response for your reaction. If you do it well, the way they yep. hoped you would, the, if, if you put humanity before, before economics and all right. the things that, that the general public wants to see from you, if you do it, actions speak louder than words again, then you come out with a positive, even if maybe positive enough to push back on the, on the, on the negative of the crisis. And it happened quite often. Right. At the very least, break even right. in the scenario of uh, the crisis happened on your watch, or maybe it was your it was a failure of yours, but your response was so good yep. that we're going to uh, kind of come back to where we started with you. Uh, those are the two good scenarios that can come out of crisis management if you do it properly and you let your actions do the speaking for you. Uh, the example is the textbook response Johnson and Johnson had in the, in yeah, the early right. '80s with the, the, the Tylenol, the Tylenol poisoning, poisoning. Right? If they were worried about their reputation, they wouldn't have done what they did. Well, and you know, a lot of people in the room were absolutely against the process that Pulling they did. The they product. did, um, and I have no idea. I don't really read too much into it, but I'm assuming some people will probably quit or or gave up that job. If if you're going to go forward with this, I'm not going to be a part of it. Maybe so, but because uh, that was gets so. conventional wisdom, but it worked out because they put they put people first. They did. They put people first, and oh by the way, they changed the packaging industry. Right. They did, in and they're still solution. in business, and, and they're still trusted still in as a, as a source for yep. for pain relief. Had a couple of missteps since, yeah. but. You know, that's the textbook example right. of not worrying about image and, and there's no wor- worse crisis than people are dying from your product. Yep, absolutely. 
Okay, so last one. <laughs> oh, he's got, he's got to yeah. giggle with this one. You'll, this ought to be good. You'll love this. Okay. <laughs> ah. Crisis communication involves spinning the facts surrounding the crisis. That word spin. Yeah, buddy. Pritch hates that word spin. I, I it's a it's a four letter seat. word with Pritch. <laughs> spin or spinning is a, a process where you're trying to obfuscate or move away from what's actually happening as opposed to simply communicating what's happening. Manipul- There's no reason yeah. to talk about spin right. if you're simply communicating. Exactly. It's that easy. Truthful. Right. Timely, accurate information. Spin is to purpose is to manipulate the facts so as to purposefully deceive yes. and put a positive light on the crisis. And we well, said earlier, our audience is sophisticated. They understand how media works. Right. They understand when they're being lied to. They also understand that lie by omission. Right. When you don't admit to things that you are lying to them, the audience sees through it. Not everyone, but there's a good chunk that's media savvy that they know they're being played or that you are spinning. Yeah, absolutely. And they really disrespect they, it. It's worse than lying. Yes. It is absolutely worse and it's than lying. 100 times worse than being truthful and taking your medicine and moving on. Yeah, because sometimes you need to get poked in the eye. Yeah, sometimes you deserve it. If, yeah, exactly. But again, your reaction to it, your response, how the actions you put into place because of it is going to be create more of an impression in the public's mind than the actual crisis itself. Yep, absolutely. So there you have it. We uh, have debunked 10 mm-hmm. myths about crisis communication. Very good. We hope that that's uh, helpful to you all out there. Mash that subscribe button. Yes. Send us comments. Uh you know, throw up the BS flag if you don't think that we uh, represented things well. We are, we're the myth busters, so challenge, <laughs> challenge our myth busting, if you will. Uh, we'll have a conversation about it. We won't be mad. No, not at all. Absolutely. So until, uh, until next time, ciao. Good luck. This has been the Golden Group Neo Marketing Podcast. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Tell a friend, leave a review, and engage with us on social media. Thanks for listening.